and has an abrupt end. How does magic sound is probably one of the hardest questions we've ever faced here. Big frame drums, an actual log. So Mirkur is a relatively new video game studio that is currently developing its first game called The Darken, which is a narrative-driven fantasy adventure game. So here we capture digital doubles of actors. We capture the, the motion of actors for ease of using in cutscenes and gameplay in video games. And this is all made from scratch. Uh, the game follows Rin, uh, pr the protagonist, which uh, has a duty bound to her heiress, kind of a next in kin to the throne of a place called Saruf or Noi Saruf. And her mission is to assassinate a f an opposition leader. And that's where your game begins. And you follow Rin on the journey from becoming a tool of somebody else to being her own person. It's kind of a coming of age story with some varied choices and, and gameplay. I always wanted to be a film composer. That's most like, that's the easiest dream. Like, you want to write for films, the big production you see on screen. But then I took a class on video game scoring, which was a, a bit more nuanced in a, in a way. It, you had to deal with not linear, uh, linear film. You have a beginning, middle and end, but you had to score for gameplay. You had to score for whatever the player is doing. So you can't decide that now you're going to attack and now you're going to stay. The player does that, so you have to respond. And that was an additional challenge I really liked. Music in com video games can vary, like varies differently based on the length of the video game. But just a, let's say the game is 10 hours of gameplay. You can have anywhere between 50 minutes of music to like two or three hours of it. So there are a couple of approaches to scoring video games. The two main ones are, are what's called branching and what's called layering. It mostly depends on how heavy on, on music it is, and it also depends on uh, how you implement it. If you just have simple loops, it's, it's less music. But if you have like these layers, because each layer is a different recording. So if you have four layers on a, on a piece and you stretch it out, say the piece is a minute, and you have suddenly four minutes of music kind of layered. So this can get out of hand really quickly. So the soundscape for the game is, uh, is a bit varied. Originally, it started as a as a pure cinematic, like orchestral themes and like this grand gestures. Then I called in uh, an artist called Sigurd Bodekretorsson, and we recorded a bunch of his like flutes and sounds and bunch of percussion that we brought in. For example, like shakers, big frame drums, deep frame drums. Uh, we recorded. Uh, an actual uh, log. One of the flutes we're using is just a, a, a PVC pipe, which is fancily decorated with feathers. And when he blows into it, you have like this high, shrill noise, and it's just so fitting for like a villain or something, imp like an impending disaster. And the good thing about it, nobody else has this flute. So that that's a that's a big. Uh, part of kind of like taking the next step as a composer, I feel. Because for a long time, I was, I was st stuck in the mindset like, no, I have my MIDI instruments. It's somebody already recorded them. They're here and I can hear instant, uh, I have the instant gratification. But say you have got some time and somebody says, I want to hear something uh, a bit different, something fresh. Then your only options are either, well, get really good at programming your own synths or go and record something and try to make it work. How does magic sound is, the, is a, probably one of the hardest questions I've, we've ever faced here. Because nobody knows, nobody knows. And it's probably one of the longest current debate upon, amongst the audio team. It's, it's me and, and Helga, the sound designer. We're, we're, we've poured over computers for months, just like, does this sound like magic to you? No, it sounds like wind. But magic in a, in a in a musical sense, is kind of different. You can go like the the simple way of 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 John Williams and Harry Potter and having the celesta playing something cool. Right?
But the thing is about that, that already, ex already exists. So it's like, yes, this is magic from another franchise. But you can kind of build on it. And I like currently I'm using uh, 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 another synth layer of this Celesta to bring a more unique sound, which I really like. So you can still hear it's like this magical thing, but it has like a weird facing feeling to it, which is what we want. Currently, I'm oh, mostly all of my orchestral instruments are from Cinematic Studio, and then I use a program called Vienna Ensemble Pro. It's a, a host for virtual instruments and effects, and there I keep all my instruments. The good thing about Vienna Ensemble Pro is you can load all your instruments in there, and no matter what other software you use to channel through this, basically, is you don't need to load it again. So you load your instrument once during the day, and then you can close all other programs as you wish, because they, because Vienna Ensemble Pro feeds them instruments. So if I wanted to play the violin, I can just open up open up Cubase, which is another program I use, and then I just... And then I use Contact, which is really fantastic. For synths, uh, I use a lot of Zebra, Zebra 2 from Yuhi. It's a, it's a fantastic, clean and neat synth program. For hardware, that depends. Currently, um, I really love my Rockets. They're, they're both affordable and they produce great sounds. And for a sound card, I usually use the Prezonus Studio 6.8. We decided kind of late into the, the scoring process that we should add a bit more sound design. And that's where the Genki Ring comes in really handy, as it's a really nice XY axis uh, controller. As you can see on the screen, it just the refresh rate is amazing, like the rate it picks up my changes. I can, I can shake my hand and it knows what it's doing. <laughs> it won't sound good, just don't, don't use it in, in a composition. But uh, the other thing I really like about uh, the, the precision of this ring is you can do things like with a, like a small things inside this gigantic scale. So let's say we have a violin line. and has an abrupt end. And this is natural. You, you can coordinate with your hands like... And even just making the volume lower, it just feels like you're... And then you welcome it back. 